Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be painting again. I'm going to be painting with my acrylic paints. I love them so much and I'm going to be uh, using them on these wooden canvases here. Okay, they are painting boards, but doesn't wooden canvas sound just so much cooler? I got these painting boards from my local Kmart, surprise, surprise, <laughs> and um, I was really surprised to see them there, and honestly, they look very, very nice, so I definitely wanted to try them out and uh, see how good they are. So here they are, and they are 11 by 14, I believe, inches. Um, pretty good size. They're nice and uh, thick as well, and they have that sort of canvas back as well. It's not just like a piece of wood, so I think that would be really convenient for things like uh, maybe putting some string underneath so you can like hang it or something like that. Anyways, um, I'm going to open these up now and uh, have a look at the wood surface. Now, I actually decided that I want to use the more stripy one today, this one over here. Um, I definitely want to paint on both, but uh, let's test this one out here because I have a really cool idea uh, for what I want to do this, like do with this one. So here are the details for this uh, wooden board and there was actually two labels that was quite interesting. So it's 11 by 14 inches, uh, 19 millimeters in depth. It says a wooden uh, smooth surface that you can prime or just use without primer but I really want to prime this. I'm using my Jo Sonja's all purpose sealer and I love this stuff for wood because well it's just what I had lying around but it's perfect for use with acrylic paint and you can pretty much prime nearly any surface using this stuff so that's why I like using it and uh, it's very clear and you can barely tell that there's primer on there but it's definitely there <laughs> so you know we still have this wood texture and I'm going to incorporate it into my art design. When looking at the wooden panels or wooden canvases that I like to call them um, I actually saw quite a few that were very different. There was like very big variation in the pattern of the wood grain. And when I saw this really stripy one here, I just had the perfect idea. I had to buy that one because I think that it would look really cool if I incorporated the stripy wood design into the art and make a fence, like a wooden fence. Straight away when I saw this wooden panel, I visualized a nice blue sky, the stripy wood on the fence and uh, some little clouds above. And then we have after that, uh, like some plants over the top of the fence. So like maybe one hanging from behind and like little branches hanging over, maybe some little flower bushes at the bottom or like a plant in a hanging planter, maybe some vines or something like that. And uh, that's exactly what I imagined when I saw that stripy wood. So that's just why I had to, I had to make this artwork. Now, once I added in that sky and I added the slight uh, variation at the top to make it look more rustic, I realized that this is really going to work really well. But I wanted to sort of um, add a little bit more variation in the wood below. So I actually got a glazing medium, which is like a transparent medium that you can mix a little bit of paint with and then get some like really thin transparent washes. And I used some brown colors to actually add a little bit of a wash at the bottom bottom edge and also a little bit on top too to show that this fence is a 3D object and perhaps with some plants in front there's going to be a little bit of shadow at the bottom of the uh, fence and I think that that's going to look really cool. So we're starting off now with some very dark greens. I actually got like my dark forest, forest green color <laughs> and then I added a little bit of Prussian blue into there to make it really nice and uh, deep and cold looking because these are going to be my first layers for the plants. Now with working with acrylics, I like to work from uh, darkest to lightest and especially working from like the back towards the front, if that makes sense. So I'm doing dark layers and sort of like colder, like shadowy layers for the 
plants and um, when I layer on more paint over the top I'm uh, letting that foliage turn lighter and uh, warmer and more yellow and that will give a really nice uh, sort of feeling of depth and will make these plants look really nice and full and uh, solid. Now the vines that I am adding over the fence here, they are a different green and that's because I want a little bit of a variance in color. So perhaps this is a different plant, like a different species of plant because it's a, a vine and not a bush or a tree. So of course it might have slightly different colored leaves and that's why I decided to do that, just to make it look a little bit nicer. Now uh, the layers on top of this tree here are finally dry. Um, and I actually added on more green and I used a different green here and uh, you know added a little bit more yellow into it just to make it a little bit brighter and we're trying to add more highlights over the top to really push uh, the brightness in that. So with this vine I kind of want to make it a look, look a little bit more softer perhaps the leaves on these vines are a little bit more delicate so they are lighter thinner and they catch more light with the sun and uh, I tried to keep them very soft and painterly while still keeping to the pattern of the leaves being either side of the vines. Now for the little shrubs down below I'm basically using the same technique as the tree up top but I am adding a little bit less yellow to this one because I want these to be a slightly different hue to the tree especially since the tree is like up higher so it's probably going to catch the sun a little bit more and look a little bit warmer. So for the really bright highlights on the shrubs, I actually mixed a little bit of white into the green color and that just uh, made them much lighter while still having a little bit less yellow. And I think that it's really helping to push the, um, you know, the 3D-ness of these plants. After this, I felt like I really wanted to have some hanging planters in here. Perhaps they're like drilled into the fence so that they're like hanging off the fence, if that makes sense. And uh, I added a little bit of a, um, like a, like a red ochre kind of, I think it's a red oxide color. And I mixed a little bit of white in that to lighten it up and also make it more opaque. And it's the perfect color for a terracotta pot. Now I used my paint pens just to add in the uh, little cords that are like holding up these pots and I also use that for the stems of the vine plant. Now while I'm waiting for that to dry I'm going in with these shrubs because I plan to have a lot of flowers in this illustration and I wanted to make sure that the paint on those shrubs were completely dry before going in and doing this. For the first shrub, I actually used a sort of light purple color straight from the tube. And then uh, with the second shrub, I actually mixed a little bit of magenta into that color to make a sort of more of a pinky purple color. And then for the middle one, I actually grabbed just some of that magenta and mixed it with some white to make a sort of pastel magenta color. And I think that those three colors work really nicely together. After this, I wanted to add some soft, fluffy white flowers onto the vine. I just think it makes it look really nice and covers up some of those brown branches in the vines. And uh, I really like the way that they look on there. They, they look really nice and soft. After this, it was time to go onto the hanging planters. Now this is the part where I kind of, I kind of could have been a little bit more careful because the uh, plant ended up being much bigger than I expected and sort of covered up a little bit of the tree which I didn't like and uh, it was getting a little bit messy as you can see there I wanted to paint a little spider plant with some of the little hanging babies down below um, it's a specific plant it does this really cool thing where it, like it basically grows new plants on little hangers <laughs> underneath anyways um i ended up adding a little sort of like hanging ferny kind of plant in the one next to it and i think i really like the way that the soft round leaves look and uh yeah i think it looks really cute with the spider plant i kind of went back over it while the dark green was still wet and i added in a little bit more detail with a light green color just to sort of add a little bit of a blendiness to it and then after this i sort of went over it and uh, fixed it up a little bit with some paint pens just to add the stripes on the leaves and we are done with this illustration 
honestly I had a lot of fun painting on this wooden board canvas thing and I love how I used the pattern uh, to like accent and enhance my painting and uh, show that wood grain in there really nicely and uh, yeah I think it worked very very well together so anyways let me know in the comments below any ideas you have for uh, the other a wooden canvas board thing <laughs> I'd really love to do the same sort of technique where I show that pattern uh, to shine through a little bit in parts of the illustration and thank you all so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this video please hit that like and subscribe button to get your scribble fix in the future comment below what you think of my art and uh, I will give your comment a little heart Hope you're having a lovely day. Please stay safe out there and take care and I shall see you in my next video. Bye everyone.